I hear Kathy over there going, she said she's ready. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's a little overcast in places, but it's a, it's a wonderful day. And we give thanks for everybody who's able to join us in person and anybody who might be joining us online. So uh, we want to thank you for being a part of worship here in Bath, Maine. So let us begin with our call to worship. Good morning. Please stand if you're able for the call to worship on this beautiful sunny day after a dismal rainy day. Let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. We ascribe you all power and majesty, O God, and sing you our praises. Awesome is God in the sanctuary, the same God of Israel who gives power and strength to the people. We ascribe you all power and majesty, O God, and sing you our praises. Let us worship God. And our opening hymn is Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. Today is Ascension Sunday, and that's why we have a rising Christ again. Please join me in this prayer of unison. We sing praises to you, O God. We raise a psalm in your honor. You clothe us in all goodness. We are draped in accordance with your design. As you have sent Jesus Christ to make your will known, you promise your Holy Spirit to guide us along your path. As your holiness fills our halls, Hear us as we worship your name. Amen. And if you'll join me, if you'll join me with a litany, responsive litany. Rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may be glad when Christ's glory is revealed. To God be the dominion forever and ever. Humble yourselves under God's mighty hand, that in due time God may exalt you. To God, God be, be the, the dominion, dominion forever and, and ever. ever. 
Cast all your anxieties on God, for God cares about you. To God be the dominion forever and ever. Be sober, be watchful. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around seeking someone to devour. To God be the dominion forever and ever. If you would, please stand, if you are able. For today's scripture reading, which comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So this morning, for Moments for Children of God, I was thinking about the fact we're moving into the summer season, right? Kids are getting out of school, summer camps are starting, things like that. It made me really think about what we do when our kids go off to camp. I did not go to camp as a child. I went to camp only as a a volunteer. Um, But did anybody here go to camp as a a kid? Yeah? You got to have your hand up. You're a kid, I know you've been to camp. (laughs) In fact, it's the camp that I'm usually a part of, but I didn't get to be a part of last year because of other things going on. But I was thinking about when you are dropped off at camp, or when you were dropped off at camp, did your parents have final words for you as they dropped you off? (laughs) Bye. Bye, kick you out the door, (laughs) is that it? (laughs) I, I do know that my parents, their, their favorite um, final words was, be good. <laughs> and if you can't be good, be careful. If you <laughs> <laughs> You're saying this with, with youth in this group, you know. <laughs> yeah, oftentimes when, when we're separating from one another, we have final words we say to one another. When we think about being a kid, Oftentimes, it's, you know, that that first day of school, it's the going off to camp, it's going and staying overnight at a friend's house, it's things like that. So, oftentimes, when we get dropped off, there are things that we hear. And in this case, as Jesus is getting ready to leave his disciples on earth as he ascends, He had final words for them, too, because it matters when we are going to go on by ourselves the things that we hear, right? So as we go into this summer season, I invite us all to think about the statements that we make as we separate from one another, whether it be a separation at the end of the day or a separation as you go on vacation, or a separation that you know will be final on this earth, even if it's not final in heaven. Amen? Amen. 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 
I know you know the hymn of preparation. I'm pretty sure most of you didn't know the first one. <laughs> But this one shouldn't be too bad. Oh, Jesus, I have promised you are invited to stand as you are able. like that to get done. The gospel message today is from the gospel according to John in the 17th chapter, starting at verse 1 and running through 11, just like the other one. So I'm actually going to start it just a little bit before, because it starts off with um, after Jesus had spoken these words. And I think sometimes it's important to know what those words were that Jesus spoke. So Jesus answered them, Do you now believe the hour is coming? Indeed, it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given to him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. 
Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So as we gather this morning, we think about Jesus. Now this particular message, as I said, it's Ascension Sunday, and during Bible study, I I goofed it up. I goofed it up over at New Harbor today, but we're going to get it right here. (laughs) This was not right before the Ascension. Do you know when this prayer was actually given? was given right before the crucifixion. It was the message that he gave to his disciples, knowing that he was going forth to be crucified. And he's praying for each and every one of his disciples. He's praying that even knowing the struggles they're going to go through, because you notice that it says here, you're all going to scatter. You're all going to run away. And even knowing that, he has words that he knows are important for them to hear. Those last sentences that we say are often important, aren't they? How often do we hear about deathbed quotes? The things like, you know, it really didn't matter to me how much money I made. What mattered to me was the relationships that I had. I wish I'd spent more time on them. We take that as incredibly important because of the understanding that this is something so important that it was shared when they knew there was a possibility that nothing else would be shared. So Jesus is praying a prayer which is actually the longest prayer. We didn't read the whole thing. We only read a part of it. He's praying a prayer for his disciples. And what's he saying in it? What's so important that on his way to the crucifixion, he would be saying, this is what is so important What was it that he said that was so important? I finished everything I was called to do. God gave me tasks, and I am doing them. It's done with the crucifixion. You gave these people to me. They were yours. They're mine. And that's important. He shares a statement in here that he doesn't share anywhere else. It's a statement that when we think about it, Jesus was so careful through most of his time on earth to not say, I am the son of God, I am God, I am related, I am a part of. But in this, he actually says in here, Glorify me in your own presence with the glory I had in your presence before the world existed. Think about what these guys need to hear, these people need to hear. They need to hear that this life matters. And that it matters because Jesus says it matters and Jesus had glory with God before time ever existed. 
and that the glory that Jesus has is because he is God. He is a part of a triune God that we can't explain, but we accept. He also continued on saying, why do they believe this? Because I told them everything that you had told me, I told to them, and they understand it now because they've seen it. They get it. They know. Just as we know that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is a part of a triune God, however we understand it, and don't understand it at the same time. So he says that they can count on the promises that he's made to them, the promises that they will be with him, the promises that they are with God and God is with them, they are with Jesus, Jesus is with them. They can count on those things, even going to the crucifix, even going to the cross, you can trust that no matter what happens, God and I are still here. So then when we get into Acts where it talks about that time period after the crucifixion, after the resurrection, we see the other information that Jesus thought was so important that he was willing to take 40 days with his disciples to share with them things that were critically important. And do you know what he shared with them? Do you remember that what he shared with them? I know it was from the first reading. And we have trouble sometimes remembering the one we heard just a minute ago. It says, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs. First thing, Show people that I'm there. Show people who and what I am. He appeared to them during 40 days, and he spoke about one topic and one topic alone. He spoke to them about the kingdom of God. He spoke to them about what it means to be Christian is in part to recognize that the kingdom of God is where? Everybody's afraid to say anything, I know. Where's the kingdom of God? Everywhere. Everywhere. The kingdom of God is not only in heaven, but Jesus tells us the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is within you. And he reminds them between the crucifixion and the resurrection about how important it is to live within the kingdom of God as we live on earth. We can't get away from living on earth. God doesn't want us to. What God wants us to do is to live in the kingdom of God as we live on earth. And why are we called to do that? Because there are a whole bunch of people in the world who don't understand and don't know about God or don't accept about God and don't believe that there is a God who loves them so much that not only came to earth as an infant, not only lived a human life, not only died on a cross for us, not only rose from the dead for us, but also promised to be with us everywhere all the time, no matter what. That God sees our failings, and God sees the things we do right, and God loves us regardless of our sins. There are people today, 2,000 years in the future, from a time 
where a small group of disciples heard a message that they went out and having seen Jesus, having walked with Jesus for 40 days, having heard the messages of the kingdom of God, they actually went out and did things that in pretty much almost every situation caused their deaths. Because others didn't want to hear that there was a God who loved everyone. They wanted to hear, there's a God who loves me and doesn't like you. And there are still people in the world today that want a God who says, I love you, but I don't love them. When we live in the kingdom of God on earth, it is really about loving a God who was glory before the beginning of time and is glory beyond the end of time, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer, who is a God who loves everyone regardless. They may choose not to love God. But that doesn't give us the right to not share a God who loves them. The message that we receive is the message we are called to share. To share with everyone, everywhere. Sometimes, we do it through words, and we stand up in churches, and we pray, and we preach, and we share testimony. We share all of these things. But there is a wonderful statement that I heard. I don't even remember who it was that said it. If you know, more power to you. I know it was a preacher. It was a message that said, preach God all the time. Sometimes use words. Our lives are our greatest sermons. The way we live is the greatest message. The decisions we make the choices say whose we are. So Jesus says, I am, I always was, I always will be, and you can count on that. You are mine. Live as my person. Amen. Amen. I honestly do not remember how many prayers Jesus prayed that we actually have in the Bible. The only other one I could remember is the Lord's Prayer. Someday I'm going to go look it up and see if there are any others. But I invite us as we think about Jesus praying for us, because Jesus is praying for us just as Jesus prayed for them. As we pray this prayer together, let us pray it as Christ would have us pray it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As a church body, we know that it takes finances to keep body and soul together sometimes. 
So we invite people to be a part of keeping the body and soul together of the Bath United Methodist Church. Those of you who are here online, you'll see the offering plates a little later. For those of you who are online, you can be a part of that as well to help support the mission and ministry of this church. And we ask you to go online and give at bathumc.org forward slash give or to mail a, a check to 340 Oak Grove Avenue here in Bath, Maine. Um, recognizing that God works in gifts of five cents to $50,000. So we give thanks for anything that anyone gives to support the work of Christ. Announcements this morning. My first announcement is um, we owe thanks because I forgot to do the slides this morning. The only reason you have them is because somebody else looked and said, there are no slides, and created them for me. So I give thanks for that. Other thanks that are being offered, those who helped with the plant and bake sale, um, all those who worked it, all those who prepared during the weeks coming up to it, all who worked it yesterday, um, and all who purchased things, of course, it's always grateful for that. And yes, especially Deanna and Bob, they were here, I think, practically every day for the last several weeks. <laughs> Other announcements? <coughs> yes, this afternoon, after at following our service, we do have the committee's meeting, as I'm calling it. Everybody else is calling it a big lunch meeting. Um, basically, for all of our committees, um, we will have a meeting following at, at 12.30, and we will have that available via Zoom for those who are not able to be here, and I did send that information out earlier in the week. Let's see here. Yes, our district superintendent is officially retiring. She is retiring as a DS. She's also retiring, um, so to speak, as a pastor, but um, they don't really let you. <laughs> the minute you tell them you're retiring, they say, but you'd take a halftime church, wouldn't you? So she's going to be serving a church, but in the meantime, she is going to have, we're going to have a cookout up in uh, Old, up at Old Town United Methodist Church. They did request that people sign up so that they know how much food to prepare because they're going to do food. Um, but if you'd like to be a part of that, it's from noon to two up at the Old Town Church. There is a basic lay speaking class that is getting started. It is up at Bangor. So if you're interested, I don't know if they're going to have a Zoom option. I have not actually spoken to them, but if you want to do it and you are curious to see if you can get it via Zoom, um, let me know, I'll give you the contact information or you can email the addresses that are on there if you write really fast before we go to the next slide. Okay. You know what, on that too, I, yes. was, I was looking up and I think that the, is it called the Many Waters District, is having one up near Poland Lane, which would be so good. Okay. I don't get the emails from, from um, Many Waters all the time, I used to. I just looked it up to see if okay. there's any other ones around. And yeah. Okay, so apparently there is going to be one in Poland, Maine, also. Other announcements that anybody needs to share? Yes, Deanna. Just going back to the plant sale, we still have some wayward plants that we owned. <laughs> uh, if you want to uh, take a look, some tomato plants, and we have a few cinnamon rolls left. Okay. <laughs> take home. <laughs> All right. And you don't want all those poor little plants to feel neglected and unloved, do you? I would kill them, so I'm afraid I can't take them, but. Others? I do have a reminder that I will be gone two of the Sundays out of June, one for annual conference, because that is coming up um, middle of 
June, and then the last week of June, I will be at Mechuana for Creative Arts Camp. They decided they didn't, we didn't want to have it on 4th of July week, so we told them that and it got moved ahead, so now we get it in June. Diane? There's a, uh, there was a flipboard going around, but on June 8th, um, Christy Connections is having its um, luncheon, uh, and this year we skipped the taste of Maine because it's for sale and we don't know if it'll ever be there again. So um, we, we're gonna go there, so if you're interested in going, because it's open to the whole church, just sign up. Okay. Anyone else? I was a little bit involved with the plant sale and, of course, the egg sale. But I want to say, I don't believe that people realize how much work a lady <laughs> and a husband put in. Yeah. And if we didn't have them, we wouldn't have a plant sale. So <laughs> that's a lot of work that it they is. put in. And I really want to uh, explain to the congregation mm. We have an awful lot of time, y'all. Right. <laughs> it is a wonderful thing, and we do have a lot of volunteers in this church. But we always give thanks to the to the volunteers from a wide variety of things and for a wide variety of things. So we we give thanks for that. And if you haven't signed up for some of the things we have signups for, feel free to do that as well. Always looking for readers, greeters, etc. Diane. Okay. Uh, several people commented on who did all this work. Mm. You people are so fair with the pricing, and it was it, it's great to come in here and be able to afford to make a garden. Yeah. And a lot of people gave us extra money, just like I don't need any change back, or here's another ten, or mm -hmm. um, they they really appreciated yeah. what we do, and um, it was it was a great day. Good. It really was. Okay. On that note, our closing hymn for today is Thine Be the Glory.
As we finish our online worship together today, we ask that we remember that God goes with us always and everywhere. You are the beloved of God, and God has made a promise to be with you. So as you go out, remember and share that love with all whom you meet. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank <laughs> you.